I have been doing an expository survey of the Old Testament and we finished Judges last time and now we're on the book of Ruth. As we look at the introduction to the book, first of all, the title. The book of Ruth is named after its heroine, a Moabitess, who journeyed to Bethlehem with Naomi. There, due to her obedience and faith, she became, in an amazing way, the ancestress of David and of our Lord Jesus Christ. The authorship of the book is unknown. Jewish tradition ascribes the book to Samuel. Since, however, David's name is mentioned in the genealogy, it is unlikely a work of Samuel since it would be rather late for Samuel. One can only conclude that no one actually knows the author of the book. In terms of the date, <clears throat> critical scholars want to date the book as late as 400 BC. But this is unlikely since the genealogy in chapter four does not really include anyone past David. If it were a later product written much later, Solomon's name would certainly have been expected. The book further fits best, it seems, in a pre-exilic background. Since the period of the judges is described as past in 1-1, and since the genealogy of chapter four does not exceed David, it seems best to conclude that the date of the authorship of the book was during the reign of David around 1000 BC. In terms of its historical background, historically, the period of the judges was one of tribal <coughs> jealousies and foreign oppression. Turbulence and unrest were the order of the day. Idolatry was rampant and ruined the Israelites morally and spiritually. This decay then is vividly seen in the latter part of the book of Judges, as we saw when we did the book of Judges. It was during such a period that the scriptures present, and this is good news, a brighter side to this dismal scene in the story of Ruth. In the time of greatest apostasy, isn't it interesting, there is always a faithful few, as is seen in this story. Amid terrible apostasy and degeneration, there are still instances of love, faith, and loyalty. The purpose, then, of the book of of uh, Ruth is to connect the line of David by way of the kinsman redeemer in Boaz. As we look at the book of Job, <laughs> the theme then is redemption by a kinsman redeemer. The book of J Ruth, excuse me, as we look at the book of Ruth, <laughs> uh, the theme is redemption by a kinsman Redeemer. The book of Ruth is a beautiful story belonging to the times of the judges. In a magnificent way, I believe it pictures the redemption that would be later brought in Jesus Christ. Ruth, then, can be divided into four sections according to its chapters. The immigration, Ruth is deciding in chapter one. 
In chapter two, the education, Ruth is leaning and learning. In chapter three, Ruth is deciding to appeal to Boaz. Furthermore, uh, she is then resting in expectation of what can happen in chapter three. And then finally, the, emancip the emancipation, Ruth is then rewarded in chapter four and amazingly ends up as the great, great grandmother of David and really you'd have to say of our Lord. In chapter one, the immigration of Ruth to Bethlehem is seen. At the beginning of the chapter, the background for the story is set forth. Because of a famine in Bethlehem. Excuse me. Excuse me. The pollen must have gotten to me today. Uh, going back to where we were then, as we look at the beginning of chapter one. Ruth goes to Bethlehem and the background of the story though is set forth. Because of a famine in Bethlehem, Naomi's husband and family have gone to Moab. In Moab, both her husband and her two sons die, leaving her with only two daughter-in-laws. This is all in chapter one. Following that, Naomi decides to return to Bethlehem and she bids her two daughters, her two daughter-in-laws to return to their mother's home. In a beautiful narration, Orpha is pictured leaving, but Ruth cleaves to Naomi. And there is a magnificent testimony that she gives. Her words in verse 16 are most descriptive of her faith and her decision to be with Naomi. She says to Naomi, whither you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. The chapter then closes picturing Ruth and Naomi returning to Bethlehem. In chapter two, Ruth's educational experience in the fields of Boaz is recounted. She goes to the fields to glean and begins to work, gleaning after the reapers. Soon Boaz, comes to his field and after greeting his workers, asks concerning Ruth. He is told that she is the woman who has returned with Naomi. And upon hearing this, he blesses her then because of her faithfulness to Naomi. He also commands his young men to let her glean among the sheaves permitting her to finish with a quantity, it seems, of about 27 pounds in chapter two. Following this day's work, she returns to Naomi to learn that Boaz is a near kinsman. She is told by Naomi then to continue in the fields of Boaz and not to go into another's. Naomi then instructs Ruth concerning the concept of the kinsman redeemer and gives her direction to make herself known then to Boaz. She obeys Naomi's directions and lies down at the feet of Boaz. As he is awakened at midnight, she asks him to spread his skirt over her since he is a near kinsman, meaning, would you marry me and take the role of a near kinsman? 
Boaz tells her, though, that there is another, closer kinsman, and that he will give the first opportunity of redemption to him. And that if he then would not take his part, then Boaz assures her of his willingness to become the kinsman redeemer. Boaz gives an earnest of grain then to her as a guarantee of his faithfulness to his promise. This is all in chapter 3. In chapter 4, the redemption is made and Ruth is rewarded. All the gate of the city, the near kinsmen, or I should say at the gate of the city, the near kinsman renounces his right as the redeemer when especially he is told that he could not legally redeem the property without also marrying Ruth. Boaz then, uh, he declined that, the near kinsman. Boaz then proceeds to redeem the property and Ruth as the representatives of the city officially sanction it all. The results of this redemption are then given. Ruth not only, what a beautiful conclusion, becomes the wife of Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, but a restore of life to Naomi and a member, and this is what is fascinating, of the messianic line. Who would have thought that this little Moabitess lady would end up in the line of Christ. As we look at the overall outline again <clears throat> of Ruth, in chapter one, we have the immigration of Ruth deciding to go back with Naomi, back to Bethlehem. Then in chapter two, we have the education of Ruth concerning what she was doing gleaning in the fields and how Boaz was a kinsman redeemer. In chapter three then, we have Ruth resting at the feet of Boaz, requesting him to do the work of the kinsman redeemer. And then finally, in chapter four, after the nearer kinsman uh, rejects the offer, Boaz then becomes the kinsman redeemer and Ruth is rewarded and becomes a relative of King David. It is interesting as we look at this and we ask the question, what would be a Christological application? I think the idea of the kinsman redeemer is very fascinating. A kinsman redeemer had to be of a near kin, a near kinship. It is interesting that Jesus became human, perfect God-man, without sin in his human nature, and yet fully God and identified as our kinsman redeemer by becoming human, yet without sin. Secondly, uh, a kinsman redeemer had to have the ability to redeem. And we look at Christ. He had that ability to redeem us. He was fully God and perfect man. And as the God man, he provided a redemption in what he accomplished on Calvary. And then the great resurrection that followed. And then a kinsman redeemer had to be willing to become a kinsman redeemer like Boaz. And Jesus said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And then he said, no one takes my life from me, but I willingly lay it down. And so as we look at the kinsman redeemer, I think we see a wonderful typological fulfillment seen in Jesus Christ.